Hello everyone and welcome to another update video on Legion Eclipse. There has since been two major updates in 2.1 and 2.2, which means I've got a lot of new reveals to show off. Therefore, I'll be covering it in order of progression, so microbe, aquatic creature, etc. However, before we get started, I have some really awesome news, and that is the microbe editor is now free and public. So if you want to get your hands on that, make yourself some microbes, or check out the editor, get used to it, all the new functions and such, you may do so via the Elise and Eclipse website, which is currently on screen now and in the video description down below. Speaking of which, Elite Eclipse has a new website, and it also includes the updated roadmap of future features to come. Now, with those announcements out of the way, let us begin with the cell stage. So, in version 2.1, absorbable nutrients were added to the microbe stage, so you can swim around and consume these and it will grant you DNA and nutrition. And then in update 2.2, we had a lot of new additions to the microbe stage, such as improved world generation, meaning that the maps you encounter will now have a much greater diversity of shapes and sizes. The water effects have also been improved, as well as the addition of diatoms, which are floating shapes you can interact with, and we now have abilities for most of the mouths in the cell stage. However, only one has made it into the demo, which is a projectile attack, which we have never seen in Spawn before. The rest of the attacks aren't available just yet, but I have a feeling we'll be seeing them very soon. Now, following the microbe editor, we have the highlight of this video, the development of the aquatic stage. I'm sorry, I just had to, all right? So a lot of new additions have come in as of version 0.2.2. First of all, it's the aquatic editor with seven brand new parts. So what's really cool is that all these sea parts you're about to see were all suggested by the community. There was a community contest for people to put forward their sea creature ideas. And for third place, we have the Crunchnaw by T-Rex Alpha 1. For second place, we have the Agolpo by Surke. And the winning first place is the Crabfish by Abstract Enigma, of whom's design is actually now a default Elysian Eclipse creature. So, in terms of parts, we have the Crusty Jaw, which is a mouthpiece that we can already see on the creature now, and a really cool looking one at that. For sensory organs, we have the Crusty Eye, which is, uh, you can definitely see the pattern with the naming conventions here, which also grants a plus at three sensing. Up next is Utility Organs, which introduces the Crusty Shell, a hard shell to protect sensitive flesh, which will give the creature additional health points. And you can see a really cool example of this embedded into the back of this creature. One as a powerful cresting and two more as a detail piece. We also have the addition of the Cintalon, an organelle that can produce light and will grant energy. This was introduced by the second place idea, the Agolpo by Sirike. It also embeds a little bit into the flesh, though thankfully we also had the disabled cutouts option for those who, you know, get a bit disturbed by that. Otherwise, uh, really cool to see this is like a detail part or even a function. We have nothing new for combat, but we do have quite a few new aquatic locomotion pieces. We're already familiar with the flagellum, the cilium, the early fin, the jet and the booster. Now we have the mighty flipper. Now this part was introduced by the third place creature, the Crunchnaut, and it'd be fantastic for the more shark-like or leviathan creatures. Then we also have the rounded flipper, which you can see in the upper two pairs over here, and the Europod fin, which is the large back tail. As you gotta say, it's a really lovely variety. And I'm also really excited to show that the editor is not the only thing. We have our very first example of aquatic stage movement. Now, obviously, it's incredibly basic in a moment, but hey, it's already further than Spore ever got, so yay! Now, currently, I can't breach the water and I can't go very deep. And due to the lack of literally any <laughs> environmental objects, you can't really get a scale for, or like a sense of speed or whatever. What I can say, though, is that there's an interesting drifting mechanic. Let's see if I can demonstrate with the water plane above. If I abruptly stop moving, the creature does drift a little bit. So if I start turning and then stop abruptly, yeah, there you go. You can just about barely see where it kind of drifts. And that's just a little feature I think is very fitting for the aquatic stage. It just kind of helps you like really feel like you're in water, you're in your appropriate environment. And I'm sure these features will be much more noticeable when there is, you know, the context of background scenery. And of course, got a bit of an idea for the animation as well. And it's just, it's just so cool to like actually see, you know, the aquatic stage is finally coming to life. I'm really excited to see the direction that Wasmans chooses to take the aquatic stage itself. But it's really cool to see that it's already begun. Now, next up, we have the creature stage, and I probably should not be using this laggy creature to demonstrate, but hey, it's a legged creature. So, patch 2.1 introduced the addition of actual feet. So no longer using early jaws to simulate claws or whatever, talons, whatever. We now have access to the primitive foot, 
which uh, this will perform better on your computers because I've got a lot of fur parts. I really should have just made a creature for this. We had the primitive foot, a simple foot with two stubby toes, which definitely looks like the early creature feet from Spore. We also had the soft paw, a simple paw with three clawless toes. So great for those who want to make more mammalian creatures or just kind of cuter creatures in general. And we have the suction cup, a round cup that sticks to the ground. So that is currently all in terms of creature editor parts. However, you will notice that we do also have all the new additions from the aquatic stage as well. So we've got the crusty jaw, we've got the crusty eye, we've got the crusty shell and scintillon, etc. And you may also notice the aerial locomotion tap. Nothing is currently in development yet to my knowledge, but hey, it's a good new placeholder for the future. Now at the creature stage, moving on to patch 2.2. There was a contest made to vote for the next biome, and we got the beach biome. Something that is not currently in a demo for me to share with you, but we do have a couple of awesome screenshots. So now that we have the major content additions covered, there is also of course changes to things at the archive and the game itself, the more technical side of things. So first of all, in update 2.1, we now have undo and redo buttons for all editors, along with the ability to enter descriptions for your creations, and the creature's physical stats now also display within the archive. And in update 2.2, a complexity meter was added to all editors. I know that might not be the most popular solution, but let's face it, we're gonna need a complexity meter. You just need an upper limit. But thankfully, I do believe, if memory serves me correctly, don't quote me, that Warsman's has also confirmed that you can also build creatures above the complexity meter. You just can't physically play with them, which makes complete sense. And finally, when you hit escape and you go to graphics, we do have some graphics options coming in very soon. So obviously nothing to show yet, but again, it's good to see that things like this are being considered and taken into account. So with versions 0.2.1 and 0.2.2 now fully covered and completed, let's take a look at the roadmap for 0.2.3 scheduled for February. This one includes further microbe stage improvements, expansion of the space prototype, which I'm very excited about, and multiplayer test, which will not be in the demo, but holy crap, multiplayer already. It'll probably be a long time before we can ever experience it, but it's already being tested or about to be within the next development cycle. And then in 0.2.4 scheduled for March, we have even more further cell stage improvements, a day night cycle for the creature stage and a weather system for the creature stage, which mind you, we don't have any gameplay for at all the demo yet. So it's looking like it's getting ready for a demo release, probably not in March, but hopefully just on the way in general. So that's all I have for today. A lot of really exciting things to show off. And as always, it's really cool to see progress make its way. If you'd forgotten from the beginning of the video, the Microbe Editor is available for free on the brand new website, which you can find in the description down below. But of course, if you want access to all the other features as well, go support Wildsman's on Patreon. It'll really help pay his bills while he focuses on development. And of course, if his Patreon reaches a high enough goal, the game will be utterly free by the time it is finished. Hopefully, fingers crossed our goal is met. It'll be a while before the game is even finished, but it's never too soon to help support him. So thank you all so much for watching. Really hope that you're looking forward to it. And I hope this has been a nice and helpful video for you to get up to date with the Lisa Eclipse. And as always, I'll see you all in the next update. Cheers and have a wonderful day.